coach Jonathan Sprinkles is here and we're continuing last week's discussion on overcoming fear. Plus, who we can? Yes. All right, thank you, Mario. Well, have you ever wondered what's holding me back? Connection coach Jonathan Sprinkles is gonna get to the bottom of it and help you conquer your biggest fears, right? Yeah. Right now? Right now. Oh you know, the, the reaction from our original conversation about fear was so huge that we had to go into it. Well, let's talk about it. You know, they say that fear is a memory of pain. So when something unwanted happens, your brain makes sure that it creates fears to distance yourself from ever experiencing that event again. However, just this month, the National Institute of Mental Health released some research that you may want to pay attention to. It was very interesting. It said that the study concluded that 60% uh, of the things that we fear never happen. More specifically, 88% of our health-related fears never take place. So what does all this mean? You're either going to conquer your fears or your fears are going to conquer you. Wherever you are, just look at me in the face, eye to eye. My friend, you're better than that. Today, you're going to take back your power. At least you're going to start the process, and we're going to do it with just three words. Do it anyway. If fear is causing you to hold on to a memory from the past, whatever it is that's in your history, the only way to break free from your fear is to create a new memory. You've got to create a memory of being the first one to put yourself out there, not even knowing if you're going to be rejected. Do it anyway. Create a memory of saying or doing something that makes you just deathly uncomfortable, but you do it anyway. It's this memory that will change the mental conversation and will elevate your confidence. And remember, confidence is not the absence of fear. Confidence is acknowledging your fears, but making the choice to do it anyway. I'm gonna keep hearing that in my head all day. Do it anyway. Do I'm it gonna, anyway. I'm gonna do it anyway. Good. I'm gonna do that. Well, you know what? I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna go to a viewer question. And this question is about a future decision that many women struggle with. Let's listen. My question is, when you're engaged to someone, um, but yet you still want to pursue your career and it's not the same as your fiance, what do you pick? I mean, how do you know what to pick? your future with your fiance or your career? That's a tough one. Well, yeah, I, I can't say that there's always one right answer, but I can tell you this. If you, if, when you, whenever you're faced with tough decisions, this is what I oftentimes have to do. I have to, to say, look, if one of these had to go away, period, which one would I keep? Which one would I choose? In most cases, it would be the relationship. So. I don't know whether the conflict is with schedules, if your new career is going to mean that you two are going to be on conflicting schedules now, or maybe it's an emotional conflict that maybe he might be intimidated by the fact that you might make more money than him. I don't know. I don't have enough information, but I can say this. Everything can be solved with a lot of communication, and this conversation should start with this. Here's what I need from you in order to be happy. So that way you can have a conversation about what matters most to both of you, not just about the job, but also about the principle behind it and about the value within the relationship. And that's something you talk a lot about, communication. You also talk about confidence, and that brings us to our next question. My question is, how does one as a young professional balance speaking confidently about oneself versus bragging? How do we take ego out of the equation but not sell ourselves short. Oh, that's easy. Whenever you're in the next team meeting, you just say, someone in here is awesome, but I'm not going to say who. <laughs> can I do that too right you now? You can do that. So, yeah. so here's how it goes. We're going to talk about the awesome person. No, honestly, you know, there's a way to be humble yet confident. And, and it just simply says, sounds like this. You just simply say, look, I know I can't do everything, but this is what I'm good at. And this is the area in which I really shine. So that way you acknowledge that you may have some shortcomings, but then you also want to be the one who says, hey, put me in, coach. Give me the ball at the end of the game because I can win. Everybody loves a confident leader. And it's okay for you to acknowledge that you are good at something without feeling like you're being too arrogant. Just be able to put yourself out there and say, hey, this is where I'm good. Give me the ball. And don't forget, do it anyway. Say that over and over. That's right. <laughs> Jonathan, Do it anyway. Thank you so much, as usual. You're Appreciate very welcome. It.
The time now is 8:21. What the city?